Okay, now whenever you are switching from an Android phone to iPhone or iPhone to Android phone, you will be in for a biggest dilemma of your life because these phones are based on completely different user interface and operating systems. It's hard to make a decision to switch and it's hard to adapt after you switch. Hence, I thought why not make a comparison video on these two operating systems to help you understand what they offer. I'm doing this comparison after using both these phones for long enough time. Now for this comparison, we have got iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is on iOS 16.2. And the Android phone I have here is the Galaxy S22 Ultra Snapdragon variant running on One UI 5.0 based on Android 13. I'm going to compare some of the important aspects of usability and features which you must know. First, let's look at the home screen launcher on these phones. As you can see on One UI, we have home screen on which we can add the required number of app icons and widgets. At the same time, we get an app tray which will have all the installed applications. Having a separate app tray can keep the home screen clutter free. When you swipe towards the extreme left, you will see Google Discover page or Samsung free just in case if you want some news and entertainment in this section. Now on iOS, there is no app tree at all. We will see all the installed applications and widget on the home screen. The extreme left will give us the widgets which can be customized. The extreme right houses the app library which automatically categorizes the applications into folders such as social, creativity, recently added applications, etc., which are quite useful. But all those applications that you're going to add on the phone will remain on the home screen. We have search button right here on iOS tapping on which we can search applications, web contacts, etc. This is similar to the finder option on the app tree on a Galaxy phone. Now let's move on to the lock screen and notification panel. When it comes to lock screen, both the UI offers very well laid out user interface with information like time and date and shortcuts at the bottom. Now, as far as the shortcuts are concerned, on the iOS, we get shortcuts for camera and torch, whereas on the One UI, we can set any applications or shortcuts we want. Just press and hold on the lock screen to see the customization menu, tap on the app at the bottom to change them. Now on the iOS lock screen, we can add more widgets on the top, which cannot be done on One UI. We can just press and hold on the lock screen to enter the lock screen and home screen customization menu, tap on lock screen customization, tap on add widgets, you get plenty of widgets, including Google widgets, which can be used as shortcuts for quick access straight from the lock screen. On both the UI's lock screen, we can customize all the elements like wallpapers, clock styles and colors, etc. But in this area, One UI is far more superior, offering plenty of customization options like variety of clock styles, wallpapers, etc. Even the always on display on One UI is far more advanced, offering plenty of designs and options like tap to show, show always, show as scheduled and show for new notifications. Whereas on the iOS, the AOD can be hardly customized. Now on iOS, we have to swipe from top on the left side of the screen for control center and swipe on the right side to open the notification panel. Whereas on the One UI, we can access both quick toggle and the notifications on the same page. Swipe once to see a few quick toggles, brightness bar and notifications. Swipe twice to expand the quick panel. Swipe using two fingers from the top to directly access the full quick toggle menu. Pretty convenient, isn't it? Of course, quick toggle and control center both can be customized. Now let's move on to navigation features and multitasking. Frankly, navigation on iOS is a pain for a simple reason that there is no navigation buttons and there is no back gesture from the right side of the screen. You should always reach the left edge of the screen to navigate to the previous screen. And moreover, this works well only on the system applications and settings. Rest of the apps, it's always difficult to get to the previous page. This is one of the biggest issue I have faced on iOS. Whereas on One UI, we have options to enable both virtual navigation buttons as well as gestures. We can swipe from both the edges of the screen screen to go back and this works with any applications and any system settings. Whether you are using the phone on right hand or left hand, you can conveniently navigate on this big device. Now let's look at the recent screen on iOS. You see it's just plain and simple. There is nothing that you can do on the screen except for closing maximum of three or four applications at a time using multiple fingers. We don't even have close all option here. And if you can notice here, the edge portion of every recent application hides behind another app, makes it difficult to see the contents of the application for multitasking. 
Now let's see the recent screen on One UI. You see here, first thing is the contents on the applications are clearly visible. And then we have got close all option right here at the bottom. We can press and hold on the recent application to open it in split screen view for multitasking. We can also drag the application into a pop-up view. Hence multitasking is a breeze right from the recent menu on One UI. Another multitasking feature on One UI is while you have an application open on the screen, just swipe up from the bottom of the screen to open split screen view and you can act Access any other application you can just open them here in the split screen and use two applications simultaneously there are multiple ways to open two applications in split screen view I have already made a dedicated video for this if you missed it you can click the thumbnail after you finish watching this video now moving on the next aspect I would like to discuss is clipboard Unfortunately, there is no clipboard history option available on the iOS. Only when you copy any content, it allows you to paste it anywhere, but the copied content will be available to paste only for a short while. This could be due to the security reasons, which I'm not very sure about. Now on the One UI, the clipboard feature is pretty advanced. On the keyboard, we have a dedicated clipboard tray which can hold more than 30 copied items and can be easily pasted whenever and wherever you want it. That is just brilliant. And if you are worried about the security, you can enable a toggle called alert when clipboard is accessed under privacy feature, which notifies you if any of the applications on your phone is accessing the clipboard. Next, the settings menu. The settings option on both the UIs are pretty easy to understand and navigate. Apart from including all the system settings, iOS also includes all the app settings on the same settings menu, which is convenient sometimes to directly access specific app settings right here on the main menu. Whereas the One UI offers multiple sub menu and keeps the main settings menu simple and short. Now moving on to the next important aspect, which a lot of Android users love, that is the customization feature. When it comes to customization, the iOS lags far behind, except the lock screen customization we received on iOS 16, we hardly get to customize the user interface. We don't get themes on iOS, no home screen layout customizations, can't customize nothing on the phone, but this simple user interface makes it very well streamlined and simple to use. However, if you're into customization, you're going to love the One UI based on Android. The One UI on Samsung is insanely customizable. Starting from the lock screen, we can customize the themes, the entire user interface. There is a dedicated theme store on Samsung which offers humongous collection of wallpapers, themes, always on displays, etc. And we have a dedicated customization application called GoodLock which can do wonders on your phone. GoodLock app can make the phone's user interface brand new every day if that is what you want. Samsung keeps updating these modules and adds exciting new features every now and then. If you want to know more about these good luck modules, I have posted many videos which you can check out on the channel. All in all, One UI based on Android offers the best of customization features which iOS can't really think of coming close to. Now coming to another important aspect which is the call log which we use regularly every day. Now on iOS, the call management is pretty outdated. It gives us about 100 recently received call logs, which includes WhatsApp calls, Google Meet, etc. Whereas on Android, we can see at least 500 plus recent call logs, which is just insane. You can go back and check any of these logs with details in a Jiffy. In some countries, we do get call recording option as well. When it comes to messaging experience, both offer unique features. I'd like to make a dedicated comparison video of the messaging application on iOS and Android. So stay tuned for that video. All right, now let's talk about something really important for some of you out there. That is the animations on iOS and One UI. I'm sure a lot of you will agree with me that the iOS animations and transitions are buttery smooth compared to One UI. On One UI 5.0, the animation has really improved. It is smoother and snappier as well. Whereas on iOS, the animations and transitions are quite smooth and it's a pleasure to use as well. Of course, this is subjective. Some may like One UI's animation, some may like iOS animation. But what I've heard from a lot of you in the comment section on some of my videos is that iOS animations is what you prefer. At times we do see some stutters and lags on the One UI animations, whereas on iOS, 
99% of the times it is buttery smooth. These are some of the major points I wanted to cover when it comes to iOS versus One UI. You can share your thoughts. There are many points which I haven't covered in this video. If you think there is anything important which I have missed in the video, you can drop a comment which will be useful for the viewers. And also let me know, are you planning to switch from Android to iOS or iOS to Android? And if you have any questions about it, you can drop a comment. Myself and this community should be able to answer your questions. So do drop a comment. And while you do that, be sure to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button if you find this video useful. Thanks for watching. My name is Salian signing off. Cheers. Bye-bye.